Passage 4. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Ferns. Today, we are going to talk about an ancient family of plants, ferns. Ferns are leafy plants which predate flowering plants. In fact, they were growing about 200 million years before flowering plants came into existence. There have also been some early fern fossils which have been found, and these are thought to be from the Mesoic Age, and that era. Was more than 300 million years ago. So, we are talking about a very old plant family. Ferns are vascular plants, and by vascular I mean plants which conduct water through specialized tissues. As a result, these plants grow to larger sizes. Now, there are spore bearing and seed bearing vascular plants, and ferns belong to the spore bearing group. The flowering plants and conifers we have talked about earlier. They are seed bearing vascular plants. So, we know that ferns are vascular plants and that they reproduce through spores, and that they have specialized tissues which conduct water and food. I'm going to expect you to learn the terms associated with ferns, and your text has a complete list of vocabulary words associated with the fern. You will need to be familiar with all of those terms, but today I want you to understand just a few of those terms. The frond is the leaf of a fern, the stipe is the stem of the frond, and the blade is the main part of the frond. So, the stipe and the blade make up the frond, and the spores, I talked about them a minute ago, well, they are found on the underneath side of the frond and go inside casings. Now, what kind of climate do ferns like? Well, ferns are delicate plants and they need moisture. Sometimes they can grow in dry climates, but if they do, they usually don't reproduce very well. So, what they like is the cool canopy of a forest. The treetops and forest growth provide a protective covering for the ferns, and this shelter is the type of environment that ferns love. They also like moist areas along creeks and streams. In order to survive, ferns need moisture in the air and in the soil. So that it is another reason they like the cool climate and the environment of a canopied forest. As you know, there are many types of ferns, and the different factors they need to survive will vary according to their type. But regardless of how much of each factor they need, each fern will need nutrients in the soil and enough light for photosynthesis, but not too much sunlight. They also need suitable temperatures. They can't live in freezing climates or windy climates, for that matter. Now, over the years, ferns have adapted to their environments, and some can live in hot climates. But all of the factors I just talked about combine to determine how healthy and how long ferns can live in climates which aren't moist. During the Victorian era, and that time period was from 1837 to 1901, the period of Queen Victoria's reign in England. Anyway, during the Victorian era, the fern became a very popular indoor plant. It was frilly. Added warmth and coziness to homes, and during this time period, houses were beginning to have larger windows and bay windows, so plants could get lots of sunlight. And window areas were more humid than other parts of the house too. And another big reason ferns became popular indoor plants was that the people who loved nature thought plants like ferns would bring nature indoors. So you have ancient plants which have evolved over the centuries to adapt to environments. Both interior and exterior, they are one type of a vascular plant. They need moisture both in the air and in the soil, and they need nutrients in the soil. We will be spending time in the next lecture talking about spores and reproductions of ferns. So, what you need to do between this class and next is to learn the terms set out in your chapter on vascular plants, read the assigned materials, and come to class prepared to ask questions that you have. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number eighteen. What does the professor tell you about ferns? Number nineteen. What does the professor say about the frond? Number twenty. What is an environment most ferns like best? Listen again to part of the lecture. 
Then answer the question. I am going to expect you to learn the terms associated with ferns, and your text has a complete list of vocabulary words associated with the fern. You will need to be familiar with all of those terms. Number twenty-one. What does the professor imply when he says this? Your text has a complete list of vocabulary words associated with the fern. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. We will be spending time in the next lecture talking about spores and reproductions of ferns. So, what you need to do between this class and next is to learn the terms set out in your chapter on vascular plants. Read the assigned materials and come to class prepared to ask questions that you have. Number twenty-two. Why does the professor say this? We will be spending time in the next lecture talking about spores and reproductions of ferns. Number twenty-three. How does the professor introduce the next lesson?